Frankenstein's got a journal. Ash, is that explain it? What? While stuck in the house? Elena side to Damon? Huh? Can I have your attention? Yeah. Good. Now let's talk about vampires. Let's go. <laughs> Season 5. Hear me out. At Rebecca's Kaga with Elena and friends, taking shots like Jordan. Connor, that is, in the paint like Shaq. Fix it in post, you remember when we drove coast to coast. Driving to a lake, Cavalier, and a U-Haul, even though that car was too small. Whipping around the Grand Canyon, trying not to fall in. Even when we broke, we were still ball in. By the bay, listen to Frank Ocean. Pour some coffee, I'll see you in 10. Just get back to you. I'll do whatever you want. Mo money, mo problems, but I'm counting in the sweet spot. PD's on the track when the beat's hot. Let's talk about business. Hello, welcome to the Vampedi Diaries, a The Vampire Diaries podcast, where a guy is watching the series for the first time with a super fan who has seen every episode. I'm the titular PD, let's just say I put the PD in Vampedi, but please call me Pete, and I'm here with my co-host and co-parent, Ash. Hello, Ash. Hello, Pete. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Ash, it's been like a month since we finished season four, but it's felt like years. <laughs> so much has happened in our lives. Yes. Well, it's a busy time of year for us. But we're here in uh, Vamptober. <laughs> Spooky season. Ready to dive into season five of this television show. With this episode, well, probably with, because season four was long, we crossed over into the being over halfway done, mm-hmm. but officially... We are now over halfway done with this episode. Yeah, it's wild. I just, like, if I, getting into the fifth season is crazy. It feels like we started the podcast recently, but also it was actually a long time ago. Like, it is confusing. (laughs) Yes. Because we started it, like, early pandemic times, 2020. Yep. And even though that was, you know, four years ago almost. Uh, we've been doing the podcast for about three years. Yeah. Three and some change. We're getting there. We're getting close to four years, though, but it's not like... That, not very close. No? Okay. <laughs> we just did three years recently. All right. Just kidding. <laughs> Anyways, four seasons we were finishing up. I'll say that. Yes. That it's just wild because it also doesn't seem that long ago. No. But well, that's, a lot of, that's a lot of shows. That's a lot of eps. Oh, man. More Epps than Mike in here. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Epps. Um, Ash. Oh, yeah. Um, plug. Okay. Off the jump. Okay. I just had some short stories come out in a collection called Darkness 101 from Collective Tales Publishing. Ooh, <laughs> These are 101 word stories. Yeah, so cool. Yeah, so that was fun to do. Um, that was my that was my plug that I was like, I don't know if I can plug this last time. Yeah, you were like, oops, maybe I shouldn't be talking about it. But yeah. it's out. It's out. Lots of other exciting things going on. But the most exciting thing, Ash, uh, season five, episode one. Well, what about this um, theme song you skipped over? Oh, yeah. Sir? New theme song <laughs> at, at the top of the app. I know. You recorded that a, a while back. You were inspired, yes. set it up while we were still doing season four. We were deep in f- season four, yes. But um, it has been released today. I like how the flows switch it up every season. Yes. That's fun. It's a collage of past theme songs, new clips, new rhymes and also just telling about one time when we drove across the country (laughs) yeah (laughs) instead of really focusing on the vampire diaries this time i just kind of tackled when we moved (laughs) from the east coast to the west coast Mm -hmm. because as of now we're the bosses of this podcast yeah of course so we can do whatever we want, and if that's make a rap song about moving across the country, that's what's what's happening. And interspersed with Vampire Diaries snippets. <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's perfect. Good little mashup. It starts with talking about Rebecca's kegger with Elena and friends. Yeah, and Connor Jordan, your favorite character, is featured. <laughs> yeah, he did really 
especially end of season four, that when all those people were from beyond the veil or whatever, <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> yeah, that was cool. Ash, I would, uh, I would be um, ridiculed if I did not say <laughs> that the founder of Feed Spot. We already talked about this, but I gotta, I gotta plug it again. Uh huh. I'd like to per- personally congratulate you, Ash, <laughs> and me, as our podcast, The Vampiti Diaries, has been selected by our panelists mm-hmm. as one of the top 10 The Vampire Diaries podcasts on the entire internet. And Ash, there's at least 10 <laughs> of, uh, of them, and we're part of we're it. We're on it. No, there are more than 10, actually. Wow. And I forget what, what number we're on. We're in the top five for sure. Wow, that's cool. But um, feedspot.com, the underscore vampire underscore diaries underscore podcasts. Mm-hmm. Thank you for your contribution to this world. <laughs> Wow. Which, which I don't think they're talking about the world of podcasts. I think they mean the, the Earth. world. Oh, but not even the world of Vampire Diaries, like fans, just the whole Earth. The Earth. Okay. <laughs> this is the most comprehensive list of Vampire Diaries podcasts on the internet. <laughs> I'm honored to have you as a part of this, they said. Well, I'm color me honored. Yeah, oh yeah. I'm very honored. Color me honored orange. <laughs> I would never expect to be on any kind of list. (laughs) (laughs) But, uh, yeah, they kind of have been... Plug us. (laughs) And, uh, hey. Yeah. You put us on the list. We earned our way on the list. We're happy. We'll give you that shout-out again. Thank you for including us. And um, one last plug. We won't do plugs at the end. Just check out the Horror from the High Dive anthologies, volumes one and two. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Wherever you buy books. Do it, do it. Ash, as I was saying earlier, mm-hmm. season five, episode one, I know what you did last summer. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? That's the title of the episode. And you know what? I was I was supposed to look up, did K-dubs, Kevin Williamson, mm-hmm. do I know what you did last summer? Oh, I can imagine he did. Let me, I'll try to look it up. Okay. Um, much like the cold open of this episode... Where Elena is on her phone typing. <laughs> Currently, Ash is typing. You should have seen how bad my typing was. It was like I K O I N Y, and it still knew what I meant. You sound like old McDonald has a farm <laughs> over there. <laughs> All right. Um, what am I trying to find? Um, probably if he wrote it. Okay. Or produced it. Well, definitely I've seen I Know What You Did Last Summer. Uh, oh, for sure. Many, many times. Did you, this was something that a young nerdy Pete did, was I wasn't allowed to see the movies, Uh so I would read the novelization. Do you know that books have novelizations? Hey, Kevin Williamson did write it. He did write it. I knew he did. That's why I said it. Yeah, that... That's a good call. Wait a what do you mean that they have a novelization? Is it like after the movie, they make it into a book? Yes. So I was like, hmm. I really want to see that movie, but I can't. So I'm just going to read this book about what happens in the movie, basically. Where would you get the book? The library. Oh. Huh. No, I don't think I know that. Yeah, so I read that. Um, I mean, obviously, traditionally, the books come before movies. Yeah, yeah. And I would read those as well, but... Are, is it written, like, screenplay format or, like, just no. prose? It's prose, and it's hmm. just adapted from the movie and... Sometimes they add more stuff. Do the original writers get credit, or is it like, well, like more like, like a fan fictiony kind of thing? So they don't. Well, it's made by the studio that made the movie. Oh, okay. It's not like some rogue. <laughs> it's like I'm gonna write down what happens in this movie. Yeah, I feel it's like a that real, wouldn't be right. It's a real book. It has the the movie poster as the cover, oh. and it's like. Based on a major motion picture or whatever. How did you find out that these existed and that you could do this instead of, well, you know, your parents were like, "We, you, you can read whatever you want, but yes. you cannot watch this." I was at the library, <laughs> in the in the horror section, and you just saw it. And I saw the book of the movie that I wanted to watch so bad. Oh, okay. But I know what she did last summer 
was famously one of those. I gotcha. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> but it was probably in the same... Sorry, I'm taking my sweater off. <laughs> Getting heated. <laughs> oh, yeah. Getting excited, actually. <laughs> I uh, It was um, either in the, uh, like, Arlstein Fear Street mm-hmm. type stand that they had. They had a bunch of those. Mm-hmm. And they might have their own little section. But it was in the horror section right right around there. Do mm. you think there's a still they still have them? They're still making them to this day? Uh, yeah. Novelizations of books, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, I like your outfit. Thanks. I mean, even when uh, freaking Paw Patrol comes out, it's like, buy the Paw Patrol. Oh, definitely. I know that about kids' books. Like, not, yeah, for sure. Like, I ha- I think we have, like, a How to Train Your Dragon book that tells about the movie. Yeah, Mario the movie, the book. The book. Yeah. But I didn't think that that was, like, outside of children's books. So that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just sometimes... Uh, yeah, sometimes the book comes first. Sometimes the book comes second. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it comes first and second. It's like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't, like, Jaws was a book and then a movie. I don't think then they re-novelized. Yeah, they're just like, read the book. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ash, do you, uh, one more thing. <laughs> do you remember <laughs> when, um, I think it's like Kelly Rowland and, like, Nellie, and she's, like, trying to text them, but it's an Excel document? Yes. <laughs> This beginning of this episode had was very that in a way. <laughs> yeah, I think who? it was my boo that song, and she's like, "Why aren't you answering me?" Yeah, and only like <laughs> of recent times have we learned that it's because she was writing to him in an Excel document. I know she wasn't on like her phone she, instead of using like a messenger a messaging app. She wasn't sharing a document on, like, Google Drive. No. Wouldn't that be such a weird way to communicate with someone, just to have, like, a shared Google Doc, and you just write it back and forth? Um, with a non-work entity, yeah, for sure. Right. Wouldn't that be... That would be interesting. I mean, I was just doing that all day. (laughs) But not, like... For work. Yeah, but not, like, in a way where you're just, like, socially conversing. Yeah, that'd be silly. Ash. Or maybe you'd be smart. Oh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> if you want Bill Gates reading over your shoulder. I was I only just said it in that way yeah. to see if you would agree with me and you did. <laughs> <laughs> Ash, I took part of a class at UCB. I know how to mm. keep it going. <laughs> just kidding, I took the whole class. Ash. All right, close up on a computer screen. Mm-hmm. Elena is writing to Bonnie. Yeah. Summer's over. We do a big, cold, open montage of Elena and Damon hooking up. Oh, yeah. Uh, Caroline packing for college. Tyler, I forget how... Uh, oh, she's saying that Tyler's helping a wolf pack in Tennessee. Right. Well, because Klaus, like, let... Tyler be able to be free or whatever. Like, he said he wouldn't hunt him down and kill him. So then Caroline just assumed Tyler was going to come home and be with her, but apparently he's doing this instead. Yeah. Even though he doesn't have to be in Appalachia, he is. Matt and Rebecca are traveling Amsterdam (laughs) and Prague. I said Matt is living it up. (laughs) He is living it up, yeah. (laughs) Jeremy is alive. Bonnie is dead. Jeremy is getting and typing these emails for Bonnie because mm-hmm. he's alive. And he can see ghosts, boopy he, ghosts. He can see ghosts, yes. <laughs> Jeremy walks in on Damon and Elena smooching. All right, Catherine is a human now, and she's so scared she's walking by a street like, ah, ah, cars. <laughs> she doesn't, like, get her hair done or combed this whole episode. No, this this choice is baffling to me. <laughs> like, to see it, you're like, okay, she's scared and she's on the street, whatever, maybe. But, like, immediately after, she should comb her hair. What, she, doesn't, she doesn't buy a comb or brush. She doesn't take a shower in any kind of place. She's just like, just because you become a human doesn't mean that you're homeless and have nothing. Like Right. Well, she can't I, compel... Um, someone to brush her hair <laughs> yeah and then later she's taking a bath and then she gets her hair gets even 
dirtier and grosser looking. <laughs> it's true. Um, Elena has a feeling that something bad will happen. Oh, Elena. She's leaving for college the next day. And Damon's like, he's mad that she's leaving and is like, what, you're giving up hanging with me for communal showers and a meal plan? Mm-hmm. So in between last season and this season was like their whole summer and everything was happy and nothing bad happened. Mm-hmm. Would you like to watch those episodes if they were filmed as real episodes or no? Uh, I would maybe watch like a 15-minute short or something. Because remember when, um, this is similar but not really, but remember when probably because of COVID, Euphoria had a big break, and then Uh, they did uh, those two episodes. Yeah. And it was like, uh, what's going on here? (laughs) (laughs) It was like one hour conversations. Yeah. Times two. Uh Uh-huh. So, I mean, maybe, I don't know. Like, would you be interested in them just, like, hooking up and then, like, going to eat at the grill and then Mm -hmm. just talking and there not being any... Because in every single episode, there's some problem. There's some right. supernatural thing. And they're always like, man, we can never just be teens. But yeah. they're teens every summer. Well, I was going to say no, but then you said watch them hooking up. And I was like, hmm. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, but um, <laughs> I do famously really enjoy the first 15 minutes of movies mm-hmm. where we're establishing what's going on in this world before the bad things start happening. Yeah. I'm like, ah, oh, I like... It was the forty-year-old virgin. <laughs> he's he's having fun riding his bike. Right. Oh, now he's gonna try and not be a virgin. Oh man. Yeah, we like this. In, like the beginning part. Yeah, yeah. it's true. I I think I would watch it. I don't know that I would watch it at every single season, but maybe because the relationships always change. Mm-hmm. But I think it would be interesting to see the characters really just living life and not like fighting people and people dying all the time. I mean, part of this episode seemed, like, sitcom-esque in how low the stakes were before stuff actually started happening. But it's like, we have a third roommate. It's like, that was, like, their biggest story for a while. Right. Until the, yeah, until the very end, pretty much. Yeah. Um, That would be, like, a sitcom B story or whatever. Like, our roommate likes weird food. Mm Mm-hmm. That'd be a new girl C story. For sure. Anyways. Um, I don't know. I'd watch like 15 minutes of it. <laughs> and be like, tell me what happens. <laughs> hey. She's taking a bath with her, Elaine's taking a bath with her eyelashes on. Yeah, she's got longer eyelashes now. She goes underwater, and then Stefan, it cuts to like Stefan in that safe in the lake. And I was like, oh yeah, he's down there. Yeah. I forgot. I know. Poor Stefan. Wow. And he's mad down there. It was a cool transition, too, because it, like, flipped, like, yeah. mirrored, sort of. Mm-hmm. It was cool. They were living different sides of a coing. <laughs> yeah. We had pug snores. Pug snoring in the background. Jeremy. Okay, Jeremy's, like, telling a story. He's talking about acting out. He was doing drinking he was doing drinking <laughs> and drugs. He lit his house on fire and faked his death. He's practicing this lie yeah. to tell the high school to go back. Right. Which, yeah, I didn't think about how he was fully dead. Yeah. And then now he's supposed to go back to high school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. When Bonnie brings him back, it's like, great, but also, like, how do we do this? Mm-hmm. Well, we just make up a lie about how I was acting out. <laughs> yeah, which he's been known to act out. That's true. Elena is going off to college, and so far, college is communal showers, meal plan, drink cheap beer, and protest things she doesn't care about. Mm-hmm. That's what Damon thinks of college, mm-hmm. even though he's probably been a bunch, mm-hmm. or is that just Stefan? Stefan's been to school a lot. Um, I don't think Damon's ever talked about that. I think probably, though, he's been there for the parties, I can, oh, yeah. I can imagine. The co-eds, Ash? The co-eds. Yeah, he loves the co-eds. Ash, Elena, oh yeah, 
he, he loved the sorority snacks or whatever mm-hmm. he said yeah. that one time. All right. Whitmore College mm-hmm. is where we're going to be spending some time. Mm-hmm. Definitely a real place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She's, uh, Elena's going to have a long-distance relationship with Damon. Jeremy doesn't need to see that, I said. <laughs> like uh, Valerie Cherish. All right. They have a real Lord song in this episode, Ash. Yeah. That's good. A good song. And Damon sends Jeremy to high school. <laughs> All right, Caroline. Now Jeremy is being, I mean, Damon's being Jeremy's dad figure. Yep. Now that Alaric is gone. Mm-hmm. Caroline and Elena are at Whitmore. Elena feels guilty for breaking Stefan's heart. Mm-hmm. If only she knew where he was. I know. She'd be even worse. In the murky depths. I know. Caroline says that Elena made a mistake. Yeah, she's still not on board with Delena. No, she's standing, steady standing with Delena. Yes, she is. <laughs> All right, Sheriff Forbes is there too. They're in college. They made it. Two vampires in college. Bonnie's there too. That was nice. I know. Poor Bon. Poor Bon. That's <laughs> sad. Um, they're bringing in a panini press, Ash. Mm-hmm. I said, what about the foreman? Mm-hmm. The foreman was a college staple. It was an early young man staple, too. Adulthood. Early adulthood. Yeah. Like, I remember being like, I need one of these. <laughs> like, that's yeah. how you, like, learned how to cook things. Yeah. You would cook me so much stuff on that foreman girl. And then we had just the little, like, individual one. Yeah, you could fit... Because they have big ones. You could fit two pieces of meat. Yeah, that's all we needed. Two two burgers. Mm-hmm. Aww. It would make, like, not quite a char on it, but it would put it would put grill lines that were, like, fake in a way. And then it would put, like, the part that was cooking off... The fat. The fat in crispies that get stuck to the patty. Mmm. <laughs> that was good. And then you got a little fat tray also. Yeah. Which, um... That was That's my what friend. they called me in high school. That was my friend <laughs> Trey's nickname. <laughs> In high school. Uh-huh. <laughs> that was my friend George Williamson III's <laughs> nickname. <laughs> uh, this is where Elena's dad fell in love with medicine, Ash. <laughs> He'd be proud of her. All right, Forbes uh, says that and then leaves. And now, these young ladies, it's time to drink. Mm-hmm. They're going to party with their blood Blood. Bags. You thought cheap beer nah. was blood. Blood. They brought their suitcase of blood with them to college. Then they have to quickly whoosh them away because they have a third roommate. I know. They thought it was a double. Kind of a weird dorm room. Yeah. It looks like a side room. <laughs> it looks like, like the attic of someone's house. Mm-hmm. It looks a little bit like the attic in Malignant. Yikes. That movie is good. <laughs> People should send us their Halloween horror movie picks, Ash. True. We're trying to build a an arsenal <laughs> <laughs> to watch. Um, Jeremy and Bonnie are at school, high school. What happens when your dad finds out you've been dead all summer? He's going to be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> you've been dead all summer? You didn't tell me? <laughs> You're grounded. You're grounded. Literally, it's six feet. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you went for it. <laughs> uh, they're lucky she's dead and still, and they still get to talk. Yeah. Right. We already said this, that <coughs> it's a special set of skills that Jeremy can talk to dead people. And to his girlfriend, nonetheless. Well, they keep saying best friends. Well, I know. They never got back together because he was dead and then she was dead, but... Whoop. Like, that's an excuse. <laughs> it happens. Uh, maybe they are just best friends because they can't feel each other. Mm-hmm. So he's been... They're in the friend zone He's now. been friend zoned, yeah. Mm-hmm. In the harshest way. <laughs> 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 Jeremy, Jeremy's fate his death story is wild, I said. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can't wait to get to the bully part. Okay. Megan, M3GAN, speaking of malignant, (laughs) that's another, hey, maybe I'm making a list for our listeners. True. Malignant, Megan, Barbarian, you start with those three, 
You're having a fun week. <laughs> I saw two out of three. Well, two and a half out of three. Mm-hmm. Well, you don't really like the spookies that much. It, I, I'm very particular. Yes. Damon. Okay. Where are we at? All right. I don't know. Okay, Megan. <laughs> Megan, Megan. 3 G A N. All right. Is setting up her tablet that she's probably going to get her AI from <laughs> so she can dance. So she can dance. All right. Damon. You're going to confuse the listener. All right, everyone should watch Megan. All right. Megan is the roommate. Is the roommate. She's setting up her tablet. She has more dead tech. <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. That this show has. This show is a monument to dead tech. Damon tells Elena to just compel her roommate out the door, which, hey, if sh- if they had done that right then, since she's drinking Vervain, she would have caught him right that second, I Ash. Know. Wow, I didn't think of that one. I, yeah, that. for sure. Catherine uh, goes to see Damon mm-hmm. with her ratty hair. <laughs> All right, there's a party in the town square. Mm-hmm. End of summer party. End of summer party. Which, and that's not true in our family. Summer is never over. Correct. Matt and Rebecca are back from their party summer. <laughs> they make out some more. They have no strings attached. Mm-hmm. They're in the friend zone. But they're friends with benefits. Rebecca wants to keep traveling, but Matt has to work at the grill. Mm-hmm. What a... Uh, he has... um. What's it called when you don't do something? Like, not stamina, but... Like you're procrastinating? When you're no, like strong will, but a better word. He has strong will to be like, I'm not going to keep traveling and doing all this stuff. I'm going to work at the grill. Yeah, he's like driven. Yeah, but there's a particular word for like not doing something or doing the right thing. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, because he could easily just be like... Yeah, I'll run around this vamp and get wild. Yeah, and just like, I don't know, steal money or however they're getting money. Mm Mm-hmm. Or compel money. Compel. They don't don't even need the money. They can just compel for what the things that they want. Right. They lost the Gilbert ring, though, because Nadia Mm -hmm. stole it. Their three-way partner. (laughs) Yep. Their third wheel. (laughs) Oh, yeah. And Silas is Stefan. Yeah. <laughs> He's creeping around the party. He fries Forbes for eating fair food. Mm-hmm. He immediately cuts Forbes' wrist to drink her blood and, like, pours it into a cup so yeah. he can walk around with a cup. hmm <laughs> I mean, I've done similar, but not with blood. <laughs> right. I'm a two... He says, I'm a 2,000-year immortal. This is my true form. Stefan is my doppelganger. Mm-hmm. Because uh, the universe or whatever had to make a fallible version of yeah. him that can die. Yeah, there's always balance. Mm-hmm. The universe always needs balance. So if he's immortal, there's got to be a mortal version of him. But then he turned into a vampire, so but he can still be killed. But so Stefan. Previously to being a vampire was the was still the doppelganger. Yeah, man, goes deep. It's kind of a bummer when your doppelganger turns to be a vampire. I guess, or maybe it's maybe it's good. Mm, who knows? And it's we'll like, see. haha, we both are immortal. <laughs> something, We're some both sort are of something. Way. Um, Silas is can read thoughts. Okay. <laughs> He has this whole little thing. Vampires are a perversion of Silas. He's unkillable and immortal. And immortal, yeah. <laughs> and psychic. Mm-hmm. He makes sure... He needed you know, to list three things even though only he needed to say two. Cause <laughs> I'm like, unkillable, immortal, and definitely not able to be killed. <laughs> <laughs> So he says all this vampire stuff, and then he's like, but I'm not a vampire. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Because Sheriff Forbes is like, why don't you, why aren't you, like, showing your fangs and drinking from my neck and stuff? You're just, Mm -hmm. he he just gently sliced, like, a little layer of skin and squeezed out her blood. Right. That was different. That was. He's not, he's not, um, (laughs) 
Isn't that a bite neck? Well, yeah, that's what I was. <laughs> I said, if you're unkillable, immortal, and drink human blood, you might be a bite neck. <laughs> <laughs> but he's not saying he's a bite neck. No. He's like he's like the person who's like, I like that band before they were cool. I was a vampire uh-huh. before vampires even friggin' existed. Right. Exactly. And that's why he's like that. Mm-hmm. He compels her to fit all, her forget all that while he's sucking on his fair cup. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, they do exposition with their roommate, Megan. Okay, Caroline and Elena talk about their boyfriends with Megan. Yeah. Tyler will be there soon because he's allegedly going to Whitmore as well. I know. I like how Elena keeps being like, well, are you sure, Caroline? Like, you know, he hasn't even done anything. He hasn't mm. bought his books or picked a room or, you know. I like that she's trying to keep Caroline in reality about he's not coming. Yeah. Without being, like, too mean about it. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's what a real, like, a girlfriend thing would be. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> a hunk walks up. <laughs> There's a party at the Whitmore house. Mm-hmm. They go to Whitmore College Party at the Whitmore house. That's all they got. <laughs> um, and then when they are supposed to be invited into this party later, we'll just skip to that. Who is going to come invite them in there? They don't know who owns that house. It could be like some one that lives far away. Right. That used to go to the school or whatever. Like, they don't know. I thought for sure that Megan was tricking them so they would, like, jump up on the roof. Mm. And then she'd be like, "Uh, how'd you get up on the roof? Are you vampires? (laughs) (laughs) But instead, I was like, oh, she was not masterminding this. No. She's just dead now. She's just dead. Or if she was masterminding it, she uh, did badly. And it's very... Well, I'm not trying to give anything away, but I'm just from previous seasons, like... People are fed vervain without them knowing it. Mm. So, like, they're so suspicious of her that she knows we're vampires. She's dreaming vervain. But it's like the whole town of Mystic Falls drinks vervain. And they don't all know about vampires. True. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. Also, did Something they. Something to think about. Did they crack a fresh cap to drink that vervain? Um, I didn't know. I didn't notice. Because if they cracked a fresh cap, then that goes back to the bottling facility. Well, you could also do a little injection moment. Mm -hmm, You could get mm -hmm. wild with it. Yep. All right. Jeremy. Or, you know, sometimes, you know, you can take the cap off with the thing stuck to it. Mm. Mm. Mm Mm-hmm. That ring. Mm Mm-hmm. The thing. Yep. (laughs) That snippy, snappy ring. Yeah, exactly. Have you ever put one of those on your fingers? Oh, yeah. Ugh, hurts so bad. <laughs> uh, I like it. You're like, oh, this is a ring, and then you're like, whoa. Uh, it's just cutting <laughs> it's, it's, it's a death trap. <laughs> yeah. I think that's in the new saw. <laughs> I think he's like, oh, I have put five of those caps on your fingers. <laughs> you must take them off. You must take them off. And then the guy takes them off, and he's like, and then Jigsaw's like, Darn it. (laughs) And then the guy's like, but it did really hurt. That'd be a good scary movie trope of Saw. Yeah. Scary movie, the scary, the spoof. Yeah, the spoof. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scary movie six or whatever. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. It's like, I I get out of this one. And then they're trying to get in there like, while they're waiting, he's all laughing. Those movies are so funny. I know. (laughs) They're so funny. They really just do the dumbest stuff. But you have to really watch a good amount of scary movies to appreciate them. Yeah, you gotta see the stuff. Otherwise, you're just like, this is so random. Yeah, or you for Scary Movie 3 or 4, you have to also watch 8 Mile. Because that makes sense for whatever reason. Yeah, you just have to watch every teen movie from the 2000s. Mm Mm-hmm. Of all genres. Ash. Jeremy gets a phone call, but then these bullies start bullying him. Yeah. And they're like, look who rose from the dead. (laughs) And And they smack his stuff out of his hands and, like, (laughs) kick his phone down the hallway. Yeah, I said these ugly bullies 
Like, Jeremy is handsome and ripped, and these ugly bullies <laughs> start bullying him for faking his death, mm-hmm. which we talked about this very briefly la- last night. And I was like, if someone faked their own death, I would not want to mess with them. They probably had some issues to work out. Yeah. And it's like, I'm going to pick the most jacked guy and who faked his death and was gone for a long time. Right. And, like, burnt his house and, like, all his family is dead. You're going to mess with that guy? <laughs> yeah. Well, what's to stop him from coming and burning your house down? Right. Exactly. After he beats your butt in the hallway. I know. And then, like, all the the people that are watching are like, oh, my gosh, he's crazy. Look at him. Like, oh. like there's, like, all these murmurs. But I hate that reaction. They should be like, these bullies should stop bullying. Yeah. They should be like, no, leave him alone. Like, oh, Why? I'm glad that guy stopped those bullies who were bullying him. Yeah, like, good for him for sticking up for himself. And then he gets, like, expelled later. Yeah. And this is me coming from a teacher point of view. Mm-hmm. What happened to those guys that started it? I think they were in the hospital, they said. Well, good. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. They were still expe- but, expelling blood from their urine. But they should have con- school consequences. They should. Catherine is drinking Brothers Bond. She's lost her tolerance. Yep. She's getting wasted. White girl wasted. Yeah. Damon offers to turn her, but she doesn't want to do it because she took the cure, and no one's ever taken the cure, so she doesn't know what would happen. She's like, yeah, I could just die. Which? I could just be dead and not come back to life. That's good. That's a good explain away. It is, for sure. Because we won't be, like, keep hitting that, like, just turn into a vampire, just turn into a vampire. We want to be a vampire so bad. So right. that explains that away forever. Definitely someone in the writer's room was like, why isn't she just a vampire again? And they're yeah. like, oh, okay, well. We got to say this lie. Mm-hmm. And also, um, it'd be so annoying to do eight episodes about this cure, and then she immediately mm-hmm. is like, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, she's like, oh, well, she just turned back to a vampire, never mind. Yeah, so I'm glad about that in a way. Yeah. She's trying to seduce Damon with her messed up hair. <laughs> it's Jer- uh, Jeremy's principal calls Damon. He's been expelled. Catherine says someone is chasing her, and she can't defend herself. She can't run in heels. <laughs> and uh, she's playing the damsel in distress. Yeah, but the running in heels and stuff is funny because she always wore heels, and Elena always wore tennis shoes. Mm-hmm. But... The fact that she doesn't have a way to protect herself, I think, is valid. And I can see why she'd be, like, so worried and need Damon's protection. Because before she was like, well, I'll just kill whoever I want. And I'm strong and, you know, vamp or I compel whatever I want. But now she's, like, doesn't really know how to live as a human. And she does have so many enemies because she was terrible to so many people. Yes, which we didn't get a specific threat yet, but at the end of this episode, there's a lot of threats going on. Mm -hmm. A lot of specific threats. (laughs) (laughs) Well, actually more of a general threat. (laughs) Alright, how long... Okay, I said how long are we going to cut to Stefan in this safe? Mm -hmm. I said, I hope it's several episodes, that'd be so funny. (laughs) But that was before he showed up in this light room where he can have conversations with everybody. Yeah. But I was like, if he truly is just all he had. in this safe and he's just like, and bubbles come out of his mouth, <laughs> and we did that for like six episodes, <laughs> that would be so hilarious. Oh, man. He's in a dream world talking to Damon. He's hallucinating talking to Damon. And Damon's like, turn off the humanity switch. Mm-hmm. Which, um, that's my favorite <laughs> Bourne book. <laughs> Yeah, so he's like... Jason talk- Bourne, the humanity switch. He's talking... It's basically like his conscien- conscience. Right? <laughs> That's a hard word to say. Mm-hmm. Um, whether or not he should just keep dying repeatedly and then coming back to life over and over again. Mm-hmm. Or turn off his humanity switch so it's not so painful. Mm. And That's so crazy. Yeah, he's in a tough spot. Yes. No one's going to argue that. No. Caroline is grumpy about their roommate Megan's juicer. <laughs> I Caroline said, is grumpy about this roommate in every kind of way. 
I said this whole episode is about having a third roommate. <laughs> yeah. Caroline drinks some protein water. Yeah, she's like, what the heck is this? And then drinks it. I know. Well, no one still knows what that is. No. What is that? Protein water? Mm-hmm. Why did they... They joked about that like everyone would be like, yeah, these... uh." Vegans with their protein water or whatever, you know, whatever. These hippies are drinking protein water now. No one does that still. No. No one has protein water. Maybe they tried to predict the future with protein water and it didn't happen. They should have done something different. Maybe that was another, like, someone invested in a protein water company on staff or something. <laughs> or, like, they got a, like, or they were doing an um, ad, like with the Samsung earlier. Right. I don't know. Really weird that she's like, well, what is protein water anyway? Burbank. We don't know. And we don't know. Let's drink it. Burbank. Yeah. Megan busts in. They worry that she knows that they're vampires. Caroline wants to compel her to forget, which she's drinking Vervain. Mm-hmm. Elena wants to act normal. Let's go to that party. Yeah. I, I feel Elena's plan, though. Caroline is freaking out. Jesse, the hunk, <laughs> remembers them. Caroline is with Tyler, so she's not in Jesse. Mm-hmm. She just walks away. They need to be invited into the party. Mm-hmm. Who owns that college house? It's pretty impressive that nobody at this party sees them walk up and go like, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, what's wrong with you? And tries to like pull them in. Come on. And they're like, I can't. Like That would have been so weird to see. Mm-hmm. I've seen weirder at college parties, though. <laughs> Damon is mad at Jeremy for getting expelled. Jeremy went all hunter in the hallway. Damon compelled the principal, so it's suspension, not expulsion. Silas S. Stefan comes and creeps Damon out. Mm-hmm. Elena and Caroline can't get into the party. This is a sitcom episode. <laughs> Megan calls. You have to help me. She's being chased. Then Megan gets thrown out of the house with a bite neck. Mm-hmm. That you can was, both be a bite neck and you can have a bite neck. It's true. And that was a very big surprise. Like, nobody was expecting that that was going to happen. I really thought the thing that I said earlier, that mm-hmm. she was tricking them. Mm-hmm. Damon and Silas are drinking Brothers Bond. Silas is reading Damon's mind. Uh, Jeremy walks over. And Silas, I guess they're at the grill or whatever. Silas touches him, and Jeremy felt a t- chill where his tattoo was. Mm-hmm. A till where his tattoo was. <laughs> <laughs> felt that same chill when Silas touched him. Mm-hmm. He thinks it's Silas. And Damon's like, no way, no way. But Bonnie is there, fills him in that when she died, it must have broken Silas free. Mm-hmm. Bonnie. Catherine is shaving. Silas comes in. So Bonnie released Silas, killed herself, so that Jeremy could be alive. Worth it. (laughs) I mean, uh, yeah, okay. What'd you say? What happened? I wasn't... Catherine's in the tub. Oh, yeah. She invites Silas into the tub. But she 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 thinks thinks it's Stefan, yeah. She likes an Elena less Stefan. Because she's like, ooh, he flirts. <laughs> he starts choking her out in the tub. She stabs his face. She runs away. Damon's there, sends Catherine with Jeremy, and uh, has a good joke about Silas. Silas doesn't have whooshing abilities. <laughs> yeah. So he says, you're slow. Vamp speed must have come with the upgrade. Uh-huh. Like upgrading the vampire, because he's all... He's pressed like, about being pre-vampire, but mm-hmm. vampire has its perks. Right. But it's it's really useful that Jeremy figured out that it was Silas so quickly, mm-hmm. and then Damon got on board right away. Otherwise, stuff could have gotten bad real quick. And Damon doesn't know that Bonnie's hanging around, right? No. No one knows that Bonnie's dead except Jeremy. Dang. Uh, speaking of dead people... Mm-hmm. Megan is dead. She's dead. There was a vampire at the party, a bite neck. Yep, yeah, they never saw who it was, but they can tell from the bite. Diane 
from campus security <laughs> is there. They found notes. She was struggling with depression. She took her life, Ash. And they were like, uh, no, she didn't. <laughs> and Caroline stole her phone. Mm-hmm. Damon is mad and doesn't believe that Silas is Stefan's doppelganger. Stefan... Yeah, he's like, I would have known this. ...is suffering like Silas suffered, entombed. Mm-hmm. But he won't tell him where, how. Bring the hunter and Catherine, then I'll tell you where Stefan is. Catherine and Jeremy are in the car. Damon calls, makes him turn around. However, Catherine clicks off Jeremy's seatbelt and then crashes the car. I know. What a bee. Silas is reading Damon's mind. Matt is talking to Mayor Mayor Rudy Hopkins. <laughs> <laughs> Who's Bonnie's dad? Mm-hmm. Is she Bonnie Hopkins? Bonnie Hops? Bonnie Bennett. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bonnie, Bonnie, Hops. Bonnie Hops is like the... It's like Bunny Hop. The I know. That's like the Zootopia <laughs> yeah. rabbit's name. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, this is so out of the blue and won't make sense for our listeners, but I don't care. Today, I'm working on this show, mm-hmm. and one of the songs we used was a real song, mm-hmm. but um, no one knew what it was, so I had to like look it up on the on the net, mm-hmm. and I was like, why does this song sound like the Zootopia Shakira song, and I started making fun of the <laughs> song we were using, mm-hmm. and we ended up changing it, but I was like, we should just put the Zootopia song <laughs> in here. <laughs> that Zootopia song is good. You like Zootopia. It's, yeah, I do. Yeah, it's good. It's really good. Mm-hmm. When she's when Bonnie Hops is <laughs> riding that train through those different biomes, it's beautiful. I love that. It's so cool. To the tunes of Shakira. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. That sloth part. I know. That sloth though. There's a good twist. Oh yeah. Um, Bonnie hasn't seen. I mean, Bonnie's dad hasn't seen her in a while, and he does not care. Yeah. Um, Nadia is around, and Matt sees her and then confronts her for robbing them. Because she took the Gilbert ring. The Gilbert ring. She gives back the ring, but then all of a sudden, who comes up and grabs Matt's head but Hans from church. <laughs> <laughs> He's someone we know. Someone we know is uh, speaking Gregor. Gregor speaking in some foreign language and turning Jeremy's, I mean, turning Matt's eyes black. Yeah, I did not know he was in this show. This guy we know in real life, he was in Better Call Saul <laughs> as one of those guys who was um, blasting out the laundromat with dynamite or whatever. Mm -hmm. He was one of those guys and they spoke like Russian or something. And now he's on this show speaking in tongues also. (laughs) We were like, what? That was a fun fun rewatch because I definitely did not clock that first time. You probably watched it before you knew who he was, right? Mm, Maybe. It would be around the same time. Yeah. I have no idea when you watched this the first time. <laughs> like, you were 11, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, Matt's eyes go black because of Gregor's touch. <laughs> and whatever he's saying. And then uh, they go back to regular. Um, seems like these guys have uh, some magical abilities. <laughs> I was yawning. Yeah, it seems that way. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like they are traveling people with magical abilities from an undisclosed European location. <laughs> <laughs> if only there's a word for that. <laughs> All right, Caroline and Elena <laughs> delete their message off of Megan's phone. But she didn't delete the deleted. Just take, just the, you can't just be like, delete... You think she sent it to the delete folder? Yeah, and that's where things go. Hmm. Come on, Caroline. (laughs) Makes note to check delete folder (laughs) later. (laughs) Um, Someone has been in their room. Yeah. Megan's tablet, her friggin' tablet. Mm -hmm. That that we saw for one second. So important to her. And suicide note are gone. 
Mm-hmm. Megan is with Elena's dad in a picture. Okay, but l- let's think about this from a not Vampire Diaries perspective. If you were just talking to the police and they told you it was a suicide and she was... Oh, we knew she was depressed. It was a suicide. Don't you think the police would be the ones who would have gone into the room and gotten the <laughs> laptop and the suicide note? Like, I wouldn't have been like, someone was here. I'd oh, be yeah. like, oh, the police must have been in here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The pros were in there. If, but whether or not that's the case, like, they, these characters are always thinking something wild is happening. I mean, they're probably right. It's not going to turn out, oh, the... Yeah, we have it in evidence. No, I know. Okay. (laughs) I know. I know that they're probably right, but... (laughs) End of episode. (laughs) It's just funny to think, like, there could be a more logical answer. Yeah. They should have been like, someone was in this room, and it wasn't the police because of this reason. Right. (laughs) (laughs) They they chopped that part. (laughs) They knew it would get it. Okay. (laughs) Let's also think about this photograph... From a Vampire Diaries perspective. <laughs> Let's get this Pete Diction out there. Okay. Megan? You said, when you saw this picture, you were like, I don't even know how to start thinking about that and what that means. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm cur- I'm interested in your thoughts because you did not well, know we, what to say last night. We don't remember. I think that we have seen Elena's parents in the series before. Have Yeah, for sure. Oh, okay. I thought you said, no, we didn't. No, I said I was talking about how his name was in the credits, but he was just in a picture. Oh, okay. That's all I was saying. All right, we can get to that later if we need to. But, okay, so this dad, was this dad the same age as Megan in this picture? Like, Megan was obviously the same age as she was currently before she just got thrown off that roof, right? Right. I can't say anything about this picture. And then the dad was maybe young. I don't know. I couldn't tell what was going on <laughs> in that picture. They both they like they both look young in this picture. But Did they she, look the similar ages? She does. She looked about the same age that she was when we just met her. Like you could see it was her. Okay, but it's not like, okay, when did their dad die? When did Elena's dad die? Like five years ago? Ten years ago? Oh, I don't have that. But anyway, my my main question is, is Megan an old youngin? (laughs) You know, like, has she been 20 for 10 years? (laughs) Okay, that's what you're wondering? Yes. Well, we'll have to keep watching. Okay. Has she been 20 for 10 years? (laughs) That's what I'm wondering. Or is she an old youngin? (laughs) <laughs> okay. Um, back at the car crash, Jeremy is all hurt. Catherine is lurching away. Bonnie is there. I said they're about to be ghost pals. All right, hold on. Sorry. So Elena's dad, though, we know when he died, when they drowned on the bridge, Wickery Bridge, and Elena right. was in high school. I think oh, it was, so it was, it was her freshman year. She was probably like, it was super recently. It was like four years ago. Probably. So Megan could maybe look the same. So there doesn't she doesn't have like to four years, yeah. she doesn't have to be like I'm my question is was she randomly with Elena's dad like three years ago doing something random or did they go to college together and Megan's been in college for twenty years yeah well we still don't know exactly for sure but just by looking at the picture because we don't know exactly how old Elena's dad was in that picture I could not tell yeah. But, I mean, they're obviously going to learn more about that, so. I hope they never mention it again. (laughs) And I hope Megan, they don't even know. Yeah, I'm sure Elena will just let it go. Yeah. um, I said Bonnie and Jeremy are about to be ghost pals. Mm -hmm. But then Damon feeds him vampire blood, and I said I always forget the implications of this. It heals them, but doesn't make them a vampire. But if they die with the blood in their system, then they're a vampire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but then then they have to feed on someone else's blood also to seal oh the gosh. deal. So much work. <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. All right, Tyler is not coming to school. He's helping his werewolf back. Mm-hmm. Elena's like, well. Caroline is crying in their dorm room, keeping her roommate up. <laughs> That's another thing about college. You got your roommate crying all the time. <laughs> crying or doing something else. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> laughing. 
We're barfing. Um, Stefan is still in the safe. Lol, I said. <laughs> if, <laughs> I'm making myself laugh because I said, I said, if he turns off his humanity again, I may have to turn off mine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's considering it in his dream with Damon. He's just about to turn it off. And then Elena pops up in the dream. Stay with me. Don't turn off your humanity. Yeah, that's the only thing about you that makes you who you are. If I have to hear <laughs> another season of conversations like, oh, you turned it on. He's not going to turn it on. He didn't turn it off. Mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we did that. Maybe right. twice. I don't know. Well, yeah, we did it with Stefan, and then we did it with Elena. Yes. No mas. <laughs> All right, Damon calls <laughs> Elena. How is her dad connected to whatever is going on at this college? This will be the big conspiracy story of the season. This is your Pete Diction. Mm-hmm. All right, back to this end of the summer party. I said the mayor is sloshed up there giving this speech. <laughs> He's being weird even before... Silas comes up. Yeah, he's just to, yeah. I he's a know, weird guy. He's a weird guy. Like I'm, I do not think he's sloshed. I think he's <laughs> just weird. Okay, because he is weird because he like wasn't around, and then he came back and became the mayor. He's like, I'm not even gonna hang out with my daughter for years. Now I'm gonna be the mayor of her town. And then I'm still not gonna talk to her. And I'm still not gonna talk to her. Who cares? She's gone for the summer, <laughs> and I'm gonna get lit and give this speech. <laughs> All right, family is a core value of Mystic Falls, uh, says the guy who <laughs> never talk to his daughter. talks to his daughter. Yeah. Silas walks up, reads the mayor's mind, reads everyone's mind, does a weird speech about mind control and drinking blood and getting stronger and stronger, and then s- people are like, oh, rebel, heard, rebel, rebel. Yeah, they're like, oh, like you hear gas and stuff. And uh, he's seeing if he can control, control all of them at once. He can. Yeah, and he tells them, don't speak and don't move a muscle. And then everyone is literally frozen, except Bonnie, because she's dead. It's, it's like they're at the Beyonce concert. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Um, he kills, Silas kills the mayor in front of Bonnie and everyone. Mm-hmm. And, and no said, one is to allowed be, to, cre- to react. They're about to be ghost pals, I said. Mm-hmm. Just kidding. Um, Silas needs a favor. He tells all these fools to find Catherine. So she was right. People are after her now. Yeah, like a lot. (laughs) Yeah. Um, That's going to be kind of fun. All right. Here's my question. Is next episode they're going to be like, "Eh, Catherine, Catherine. Or is it going to be like people are going about their regular lives and then like if they see Catherine, they're like, meh. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, are they going to be like, Catherine, Catherine? Like, zombie? Like, oh, blah, blah, blah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be more of a zombie. Okay, you can't do it three times. Or more of a, like, an on site like <laughs> scenario. That's there. a good question. You'll have to keep watching to find out. But before you do more predictions, you need to give your fangs. Um, two fangs. Back in the saddle. Yeah, I think Two Fangs also, um, I was telling you when we were watching the show that I really like seeing all the different characters that Paul Wesley plays, Mm -hmm. like, even though he always is himself, but we see, like, his his regular Stefan self, we see the Ripper Stefan, we see Stefan before he became a vampire. Young boy Stefan. We see now Stefan as Silas, and... They're, they're all distinguishable. Like, you can really know each individual character, and I think that just is a testament to what a good actor he is, and it's so fun to watch. So I really like seeing him as Stefan. Yeah. I mean, as, as Silas. As Silas. Well, also Stefan. I like him as Silas, too. I like him better as Silas than Stefan, I said. <laughs> I was like, Silas is chill, man. Well, he's very just direct, and he's got, like, no... Worries. If you're immortal and unkillable, yeah. you have nothing to worry about. And he doesn't have the, like, neediness of Klaus. He's like, hey, right, 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 right. I need you to fear me. <laughs> <laughs> Klaus is just like, oh, no, He's just like, oh, oh, drinking blood. Yeah. Kill this guy. You guys mm-hmm. help me do this. I'm wondering if I can control all your mind. 
Like, if, <laughs> if he couldn't yet control all their minds, he would have just been like, eh. And they would have been like, man, Stefan is a freak. <laughs> and he would not have cared. He'd be no. like, yeah, all right. <laughs> they can think Stefan the freak. I don't care. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's funny. Okay. Any other predictions? Nah. You know, it's just the beginning. Just the beginning. Ep one. Already did the plugs. Um, yeah. I mean, every two weeks we're back, back at it again. That's with the, the plan. White, with the white vans. <laughs> That's the plan. Yep. Well, and thanks for being patient with us while we took a little break, and maybe that gave you a chance to catch up and uh, have fun listening. <laughs>